this week's edition of World Crisis Radio. And this is Webster Tarpley here in Washington, D.C., reporting to you. Now, think of it, the destruction of the Republican Party in place as a national political force. Think of the odious Republican Party dwindling back down to what it always should have been. That is to say, a local and state party for bigots, for racists, for warmongers, and primarily focused in the Deep South, in rural America, and in the sparsely populated areas of the Intermountain West. That is what the Republican Party actually deserves to be and represents in terms of interests. Now, of course, when we look at their results, they get much more than that. They get it because of billions upon billions of dollars of support poured in by the Koch brothers and other billionaires and feeders at the public trough, sociopathic elements of all sorts. And when we look at the Republican Party, we've got to say this grouping is a threat to the future of the United States and everybody in it. They block science research. They won't fund the National Institutes of Health. They won't fund the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. They won't fund any of dozens of worthwhile projects. They have now become the party of anti-infrastructure. They hate modern rail. They hate uh, building, rebuilding the highway system. They hate the ports, stocks, canals, and other facilities that we must modernize. Generally speaking, this is the party of the most narrow-minded, uh, crabbed uh, sectors of the population, the 1% or the one-tenth of 1%. These are people who are extremely rich. They have money. They think they will continue to do so. And the Republicans cater to them. And the attitude of those rich parasites is, we don't want to pay for any of that. They refuse to invest in the labor force. They refuse to upgrade the United States so we can have a labor force to compete with and surpass China in the decades ahead. We can do all of that, but we can't do it with this millstone, this albatross around our necks, this ball and chain, the odious, fascistic, reactionary, racist, bigoted, holier-than-thou Republican Party. Well, you know what we've been standing for here at the Tax Wall Street Party? We want the Republican Party destroyed in place. And that means by political means, of course. And I have to say, the great promise of the Trump campaign, which we recognized very early on and have been celebrating ever since, is the idea that Trump could be the wrecking ball. He could bring down the walls of this Babylonian edifice. Uh, He could then become, in another sense, the Samson of... uh, of the Republican Party. I was, I'm laughing because I'm thinking about the importance of hair, right? Samson got his strength somehow through his hair. And I guess Trump may be said to have uh, gotten some strength from his hair uh, until Delilah, right? Delilah, in the version of one of these wives that he's had, comes along and uh, snips off his, his locks and snips off that thing that he's got, the comb over on the top of his head. Um, In that case, Samson pushes those columns apart, brings down the Temple of the Philistines on the heads of all of those tenants. And, of course, the tenants are the Koch brothers, they're Sheldon Adelson, they're all of these horrible people who think that you can buy and sell democracy, national sovereignty, honor and dignity, the things you can't live without and which Trump lacks completely, no honor, no dignity. And no Americanism either, because as everybody who looks at this for two seconds can see, Trump is the anti-American candidate par excellence in the sense that he negates all of the important values upon which this is based. And that includes 
his rejection of higher wages. He said, wages are already too high. If you say that, that means you are a low-wage candidate. You're out of the American tradition, which is high wages, high value added, high capital intensity, high energy intensity, high value production that produces profits. Yeah, that produces a social surplus that can then be redeployed in other directions. So all of this, uh, we have the tax Wall Street Party have been looking at this for a while, and our conclusion is the Republican Party really ought not to exist except as that limited formation that I've said before. And of course, once you succeed in uh, busting up the Republican Party, the corrupt Democratic Party loses a lot of its cover story, a lot of its um, ability to hide the dirty uh, parts of its own operations. Those begin to disappear once the Republicans are no longer there as an alibi or as a, a kind of a boogeyman to uh, frighten people back in to the Democratic Party. And of course, parenthetically, uh, Bernie Sanders is the border guard of the Republican Party. He's the guy who essentially drives uh, of the Democratic Party, I mean, to say, Bernie, if you're trying to leave the, the Democratic Party for something uh, actually viable, like the tax Wall Street party, uh, the Bernie Sanders operation is there, feel the burn, go back to the Democratic Party, and he's fixing to betray you, as everybody could see in that debate with Hillary Clinton, right? Bernie is an integral part of the Hillary Clinton for president campaign. So that's, um, that's something like the situation we face. Now, big developments on this uh, front. Let's, I guess, sort of go through it a little bit chronologically uh, ra rather than in medias race. But here's the idea. In the uh, Washington Post of uh, Friday here, Friday, December 11th, today, um, front page story, dominant uh, story today in the, uh, the insider's journal here, actually controlled by the Federal Reserve Board, GOP to gear, gird for a floor fight, <clears throat> for a floor fight, possible drama at convention. Excuse me. Uh, scenario seen as more likely as Trump rises. Now, the word here is a smoke filled room, a smoke filled room, a cabal. A camarilla, how about that? A little room, a little smoke-filled room. And here we have a bunch of power brokers. Now, in the old days, it used to, whenever you said power brokers, the next words were up against the wall. But in this case, they triumph, but not for long, perhaps. Um, we are at uh, an eatery in Washington, D.C. called The Source, an Asian fusion restaurant near the United States Capitol. And this has long been the, the locus, the venue for a series of high profile meetings, but secret, with Reince Priebus. Priebus, the, uh, I guess he's a Wisconsin hack politician, perhaps John Burt Society for all we know. He's been meeting with these bigwigs uh, every week for a while because they're supposed to develop ideas for a party that is completely barren of ideas. And we'll be back in a minute on World Crisis Radio. Webster Tarpley here in Washington, D.C. And we're reporting on the looming collapse and destruction of the reactionary party, which has done so much harm to our beloved country under the banner of greed and bigotry and warmongering, union busting, class warfare, war on women, you name it, right? Last week I was telling you about how one of the features of fascism is misogyny. Well, 
look no further than the Republican Party and their despicable war on women. Worst kind of coward, the ones that on women. Those are the Republicans these days. Make no mistake. So what we're looking at uh, is this fascinating camarilla or smoke-filled room in the U.S. parlance. And this is here in Washington, D.C., at the stylish eatery known as The Source on Capitol Hill. So it was last Monday evening, a dark and stormy night in the nation's capital. And who do we have? Well, it's Reince Priebus, Priebus uh, of the, uh, the head of the Republican National Committee. Party boss Reince, we'll call him. Uh, then we have Ward Baker, the head of the National Republican Senatorial Committee, right? He runs all the Senate campaigns, or if they want the money, he does. Uh, Rob Sims, the head of the National Republican Congressional Committee, that's for the House of Representatives. Ron Kaufman, a Republican National Committee uh, member, a, a National Committee man, uh, Representing Romney, isn't that interesting? Representing Romney, pollster Linda Deval. Then we have an advisor to Senator Marco Rubio of Florida. This guy's known as Witt Ayers. His relation to Bill Ayers is still being investigated. Vin Weber, uh, this is a, a, um, a, a congressman who quit years ago now. He's generally uh, a lobbyist, and he's usually on the side of the austerity ghouls, so make no mistake about that. But Vin Weber appears here as a representative of the uh, campaign of Jeb Bush, Jebby. Now, you'll notice here, this is not fair. This is kind of an ex parte proceeding, which you're not supposed to do. What can we say? If they invite representatives of Rubio campaign, representatives of the Jeb Bush campaign, and even representatives of Romney, who's theoretically not even running, although he might be brought in as a solution, if you have a, uh, a hung convention, <laughs> and um, they're all there uh, confabulating. So the idea is that at a certain point, Reince Priebus says, well, we've, we've got to examine the, the rules of the Republican Party and see what can be done about Trump. And when they say Trump, they also mean, at least some of them mean Cruz, not all, and rather more of them also mean Carson. So we'll get to that in just a minute. So um, the idea was a brokered convention. Now, we, we'll get to this terminology. These terms have not been used for such a long time that most of these stupid scribblers and uh, prostitutes, they don't know what these ter different terms mean because they've never been used in the lifetimes of many of these uh, sort of uh, overgrown adolescents who do a lot of the writing. So they, what they're talking about is, in the old days, this, would have been, this whole thing would have been known as a Stop Trump movement. Stop Trump. That is very much the idea, but they don't call it, they call it a brokered convention, um, which I guess is, is one way to, dis, to describe it. So um, they're trying to think of ways to unite all the anti-Trump forces. And of course, the, the anti-Trump forces outnumber the Trump forces by about two to one, right? It's about you know, one third for Trump at most, uh, and then two thirds uh, are not for Trump. So that, again, that leaves Trump with one third of one third, but it's really more like one third of one fourth. So between a ninth and a twelfth of the um, of the U.S. electorate, which is not very impressive, although it has been uh, hyped. So what they want to do is promote the idea of converging on a, uh, you know, a kind of a United Front or, you know, uh, Sacred Union, right? Union Sacré. They want to have a, uh, a convergence on one establishment uh, figure that they can support. And they're also telling the people who are running 
when you uh, or if you if and when you have to drop out, don't completely end your campaign, but suspend it. And what does that mean? Suspend it. It 